here's the thing. Car buyers right now, they're looking to be excited. They're looking for something different and new, and they're looking for the next phase. Look, we're going all in. Today I've got uh, something a little bit unusual for the channel, but very exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the new Mach-E from Ford. It's the Mustang Mach-E. How wild is that? Never thought I'd see the Mustang brand in something like this, in a, well, an electric vehicle for one. This vehicle right here, as you can see, is a more utilitarian type of look but carrying with it that Mustang back and some of that DNA. These taillights reminiscent of some of those Mustang designs, current and past. Same thing. You see the three stripes over here on the headlights. One thing that I recognize the more that I looked at this car is how much identity lives in the grill. Of course, you don't need to have any of this on an electric vehicle. And there are other manufacturers that have kind of simplified things on the front. However, one of the downsides of going ultra simple is you lose some identity, possibly some character. So you have these little flaps underneath there and these open and close, depending on if cooling is necessary, they can enhance cooling and improve performance. Listen, Ford has done some things here that I really like to see on any vehicle that happens to be a little bit taller or a little bit bigger. So you have this panoramic glass along the top. And you can see the space that it occupies there, but then you have this black panel which curves down like this and it gives you a coupe look on what is obviously a four-door uh, vehicle, which is sort of like an SUV. So they also did the same on the bottom underneath the doors as well. And again, it just squishes the whole thing down and gives it more of a sports car feel. You're gonna get the headroom, but the visual of a much lower vehicle, a much more aggressive, vehicle. Now, the other thing I got to mention, I mean, this is the big news with the Mach-E, the fact that you don't have door handles. Now, it's not just to be futuristic, although it is obviously very futuristic. When it comes to electric vehicles and range, uh, you start to evaluate this uh, drag coefficient and you try to be as efficient as possible. I started to think about door handles. They're actually not as convenient as you think. I mean, you're so used to seeing them there. However, what you'll often do is open the door handle and then go the rest of the way with the door anyways. Am I complaining about door handles? I mean, door handles are fantastic. They open doors. I get it. See, on the rear door, there's no handle at all. They could have done this on the front too. But it's not a huge deal because it's hidden behind the side mirror, which you're going to have anyways. And so any aero drawback having had this uh, uh, will be negated by the fact that the side mirror is already impacting whatever aerodynamic extra you may have in that region. You're gonna charge up right over here. You can also catch a glance at the wheels. I believe these are the 19 inch wheels. Now, keep in mind, there's gonna be a few different trims of this particular vehicle. You have like the first edition. I think this is premium version. There's a four wheel drive, two wheel drive on the budget end of the spectrum. And then at the very top tier, the fastest unit is gonna be the GT. It's gonna have the GT badge on the back. These are gonna be fast, uh, lots of horsepower zero to 60 times that in this particular segment are going to be impressive. So you can use the app to control various elements of the vehicle. Of course, we can see the charge level, the estimated distance until empty. But then if you pop over to your controls, you can do things like lower the windows, put the windows up, open the trunk, lock and chirp, unlock right from here, or even start the vehicle. So I'm gonna go ahead and unlock this way. Everything comes to life. You also have a backup on the door. You can put in a pin code. You hit the button right here, and then the door moves to this position. This is kind of a crazy functionality. I know some people might be nervous thinking, wait a sec, now I'm supposed to grab in there. What if I close on my fingers? They actually built in a safety mechanism so you can't close it on your fingers. Now, I don't recommend you do this specifically, but you can see I can apply pressure and it's not gonna close. Back door same situation. Again, safety mechanism built in and there's a little rubber section to actually grab onto that's comfortable for your hand. Now, because they decided to go a little bit bigger on this vehicle, uh, it means you get a lot of cargo space. 
I mean, in reality, this is just a really popular segment of the market. The kind of small to mid-size SUV four-wheel drive. Yeah, you want to have a high-performance vehicle, but they can sometimes be useless when the snow hits the ground. This one, on the other hand, you could, I mean, you drive it year-round, it's no problem. It's going to perform in all types of conditions, a little bit higher up a little bit bigger tire, and of course that four wheel drive. So this one opens up, motorized. This is a tremendous amount of cargo. What happens if I lift up over here? An emergency air compressor. I don't know if that's an additional add-on. 12 volt back here as well. You wanna run a cooler or something like that. You know it's gotta have something going on in the front as well. Pop the hood. Gotta have a frunk on the electric vehicle. And this one is kind of unique because it has this built-in organizer. You could keep some charge cables in here. You could actually use it kind of like a cooler. I think there's actually a drain plug. There is. There's actually a drain in it if you did want to put some ice in it and have yourself a time. This is removable. So these are just these tiny little plastic pins. You could pull the organizer out and just have a big space there. I probably would just leave it in. So obviously these screens dominate your experience. And the most standout thing here for me is the ability to have multiple interfaces on one display. They're letting you put your CarPlay on the main screen alongside your Ford specific interface. So this way I get the best of both. Sometimes I don't want to go all the way into an exclusive smartphone experience. There's certain aspects of my car system that I want to remain uh, having access to. And this kind of gives you that. By the way, it's also wireless. I think that's the most futuristic experience. You just have your phone there as soon as you step in. You don't even need to think about it. And it's even better because right down here you have wireless charging on this rubber mat. And that's another standout thing is some of the cargo space in here is exciting to me. Cup holders and then phone section. Not just one, but you could have two phones over there. This is the wireless charging in this section over here. There's also a USB type C and a USB type A port if you want to do the wired connection, maybe a slightly faster charge. Underneath there, there's more cargo actually. So it's like a double tray system. Five modes are selected here in the center, park, reverse, neutral, etc. It's this wheel right here. Now, as we look up along the dash, you see lots of texture. This has, I believe, an optional audio system from Bang & Olufsen. And this thing is like a giant speaker. You have your ventilation hidden just below there a carbon fiber type material and a leather. So lots of different materials in play. The screen has a very standout feature, which I remember people talking about as soon as this vehicle was announced, an actual mechanical volume knob on top of a touchscreen, which actually works underneath the knob. This is the kind of thing I appreciate. I like to have a physical dial for certain things to be able to reach up quickly or even without even looking and know that you're going to be controlling the volume. Uh, it's a hard thing to figure out. When, once we go to these completely digital interfaces, it's like, how do we still do that without putting something separate somewhere else? And this is kind of a novel approach to that problem. There's also a screen squarely in front of you. So this monitor in the front obviously prioritizes your speed, which is going to show up in the center section over here on the right we can see the drive mode that we're currently in we have range and battery life over on the left and then of course also your other pertinent information whether it's nav your headlights or whether or not you have a door that's been left open apparently the mustang inspiration comes into play over here as well they didn't want it to feel like a big vehicle they wanted it to be reminiscent of what it would be like to drive the coupe so to seating position, the steering wheel, the feel. It really does mimic something smaller and more nimble. Over on the left-hand side, we have controls for lane keep assist, a distance assist as far as the vehicle in front of you. Of course, there's also cruise control on there. And then over on the right-hand side, we have some voice activation and some controls for your calls, volume, and forward and back for skipping tracks. Look at this. YouTube music, big buttons to interact with, and then of course your volume wheel. Oh, I should talk about this real quick. You have various drive mode settings, depending on how you feel like driving. So 
Uh, you have engage, whisper, and unbridled. This is basically like your comfort mode, your normal mode, and your sport mode. Obviously, unbridled means you're gonna get the most performance, the most feedback, the fastest acceleration. There's also settings here for a propulsion sound, audio ambient light selection, and a one pedal drive. This brings the vehicle to a stop and recovers energy when you release the accelerator. And there's something really satisfying about this wheel. It is a very satisfying wheel. I just love, I love having the phone connect wirelessly. That's, I don't know, it seemed like such a breakthrough for me and a thing that's been missing. I hate fiddling with cables, especially when you have wireless chargers built into cars. This just feels so much more seamless and useful and I would just do it every time instead of half the time, I'll be on like a short trip and I'd be like, oh, I'll just let the Bluetooth connect and play my podcast that way. But then it's just not as clean to interact with. So whether it's Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, they're both built in there plenty of room look at that right there that is no problem i could sit here for an extended period of time and and not be bothered and actually you know what adds to it a lot is the the giant panoramic roof over here i've had this experience on other vehicles and it just makes a big difference if you've never seen it before as far as the feeling of space and of course the ever important usb type c and type a for charging your devices in the rear seat okay so pop that one pop that one and i mean it should be pretty obvious at that point like you can get a lot of stuff back here you could obviously load up the camp gear no problem uh you could load up the sports equipment it's going to get in there you also have a big opening at the back because it is that hatchback design so i know i hear you mustang fans out there in the world you're sitting there saying hey man it ain't a mustang that thing's got four doors the thing's up high. The thing's a four-wheel drive. That's not what a Mustang is. Where's my V8, uh, sports car, coupe, etc. As much as at first it made me a little bit uncomfortable to see that badge on a vehicle like this, now that I've been in front of it and kind of experienced it in real life, I'm like, you know what? Yeah, why not? Why not have a little extra excitement associated with your vehicle, even if it is your everyday car even if it is your everyday driver that you can put groceries in like i really think there's some things going on here it's got me a little bit more excited that's for certain and ford is coming into a world where companies like tesla have carved something out where companies like tesla are well established in the ev space maybe putting the mustang badge on there is gonna bring this car to a group of people who never expected to want a Ford. There's actually not a single Ford badge anywhere on this car. So you can tell me in the comments how it makes you feel, but I can tell you standing in front of it and interacting with it, I'm actually impressed at what they were able to put together. They only had two years, they, two years to work on that car. They had to do it in two years. 